All right, so basically there was, um, a, you could call it a leak, but basically there's news on the iPhone 6S. There's been a lot of clickbait ads that were telling us that there was going to be an iPhone 7 instead of an iPhone 6S, but anybody with any intelligence whatsoever already understands Apple's marketing strategy. They release a phone with a number, then the next year they release an upgraded phone with a number and an S, and then after that, they release a new number. So after the 6S, there will most likely be iPhone 7. Now, um, Forbes had this story, and it says massive leak reveals 11 new major features. So let's take a look at them. The first one is Force Touch. I have Force Touch on my uh, brand new Apple Watch, and to tell you the God's honest truth, I haven't really seen any major uh, benefit to having force touch. In fact, at the end of this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about my watch or my experience thus far after having it for just one day. I wanted to wait a whole week of having it, but I'll t some things you can actually review a lot earlier than one week. So anyway, the next thing, the screen size. I think Apple really screwed up when they made the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 4 didn't have a 4-inch screen. And then when they made the iPhone 5, and the iPhone 5 didn't have a 5-inch screen. So they made us wait to the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus in order to give us a 4.7-inch screen and a 5.5-inch screen. I personally, because I'm a very tall guy, I'm six foot six and I have big hands, uh, the 5.5 fits in my hand just like a typical Galaxy phone fits in a typical woman's hands because it matches my size. Most people I know have either gone, usually they go for the 4.7, but a lot of people I know have supplanted having an iPad by getting the iPhone 6 Plus, and they love their phones. So Apple doesn't seem to be changing any of the sizes, so there's going to still be a 4.7 and a 5.5. Personally, I love the 5.5. I think it's the greatest electronic device to ever be built, honestly. The next thing. Um, Apple is supposedly making a new casing color. They're going to give you rose gold in order to match your $17,000 rose gold iWatch. So for the few of us who out there like the Dubai oil shakes and the uh, Saudis who actually have a rose gold Apple Watch, well, now you're going to be able to get a phone that matches it. The camera. Okay, they're saying that Apple's camera has been surpassed by the Galaxy S6. Now, I've used the Galaxy S6, and here's the problem, though. See, a lot of people, they used to talk a lot of shit about how Samsung, oh, yeah, well, we can move our memory cards, and we can get new memory cards when we run out of space, or we can swap our batteries when we run out of battery power. Well, guess what? Samsung realized exactly the reason why Apple was making such better products than them, and then what they did was when they made the Galaxy S6, they took away your ability to get memory cards, and they took away your ability to swap in new batteries. So now what you have is a Galaxy phone that is basically an iPhone with the exception that it runs Android. You have uh, the you know the flash drive now and you also have a battery you can't take out. So all of that talk, well unless you have a Galaxy 5, that talk is pretty much finito. So anyway they're saying that we should have a 12 megapixel camera. Personally, the pictures that I'm already taking off of my iPhone 6 Plus, in my opinion, are perfect. Most people aren't printing pictures anymore. Most people are just sharing them online on Facebook. And if you're using video like I do, you're usually sharing it on uh, YouTube. What I need is more storage space. 128 gigabytes on this iPhone isn't enough for me. I need 512 or 256. I need like 256 minimum. Because the problem is, when you start running out of space, you're like, oh my god, how the hell did I start running out of space? But when you're shooting 1080p video at 60 frames a second, you start running out of space quick. Now, the Galaxy cameras uh, claim that they have 4K. And I've seen their video quality on televisions that are 4K televisions. I wasn't impressed. Now, anybody can argue that point, but the thing about it is if I really wanted a Galaxy phone with a 4K camera, I would have already bought one with a 4K camera. What I will say is that the one feature that Galaxy phones do have that I really like 
is the fact that they, the Galaxy S5 anyway, they don't do it anymore, but the Galaxy S5 Active had the ability to go underwater. So if I could take that thing to a beach and shoot videos of the fish nipping at my toes when I go away on vacation, that would make me very happy instead of the fact that you can't take an iPhone or a Galaxy S6 underwater anymore because they removed that feature when they realized that those phones were so cheaply made out of that cheap Chinese plastic that they started getting a lot of complaints. So I'd probably wait until a Galaxy S5 Active goes on sale on like eBay or something and I'd pick one up for maybe 150 bucks just so I'd get the underwater ability because that's the one thing Apple hasn't matched. And that's the one feature that I really want, especially for going to beaches in foreign countries. Performance. This thing has a 64-bit CPU. And the most I could see them doing really is just adding more memory to it. But the thing about it is the app developers really need to improve their uh, debugging. Because um, most of the apps that I used to have on iPhone 5... The, when they got transferred over to iPhone 6, a lot of them became oh, very, very buggy. Like, even right now, I'm having trouble with my Sirius XM app. That's not the fault of Apple. That's the fault of the app developers. And we had trouble with the Sirius XM app for a long, long time across phones. Galaxy and Apple phones. Um, not just Samsung phones, but anything that ran Android, we had problems with the uh, Sirius app for a very long time. And I'm very disappointed about that. Microphone. So they want to add one microphone near the speaker to improve voice quality. Hey, Apple's really good at voice quality, so that sounds pretty good. I ain't got no problem with that. Internal mechanical design. This bending issue, to me, is a non-issue. When I see people sitting on their phones, regardless what phone they have, it just makes me want to slap them in the head and say, what the fuck are you doing? Don't sit on your phone. Put it in a side pocket. Oh, well, they don't have a side pocket. Well, you need to get some cargo pants. I, why would you? You don't sit on a fucking thousand dollar phone. Well, your phone's not a thousand dollars. You got one of those cheap ass Android phones, and your phone's only worth like four ninety nine or some shit. Well, this one twenty eight gigabyte iPhone six plus was a thousand dollars plus tax. So I don't sit on it. I keep. I bought cargo pants just for this phone. Next, cover lens. They're gonna put a lens cover on it, huh? What the fuck? They ain't going to produce that. Come on. They're not going to produce that. Get the fuck out of here. It says drop tests. If the drop test can be resolved, the 5.5-inch model will have a limited number of units with a sapphire cover lens. Okay, so basically they're just going to improve the lens, but I know they ain't going to put no crazy-ass shit like that on it. That ain't going to happen. Touch ID. Touch ID. What's that going to be about? Ooh. The recognition rate of Touch ID will be improved. Okay. All right, yeah, to improve Apple Pay. The problem with Apple Pay, and, you know, some people swear by Google Pay, some people swear by Apple Pay. The problem with Apple Pay is in order to make it secure, Apple did not use the Internet for storing the information. Google stores its information on the cloud. That means that it's always in the cloud, and that means that it's less secure than Apple's information, which is stored in what's called the secure element on the phone. When you store your information, like your fingerprints and your bank cards and all that with the uh, um, app, with the pay apps inside the phone, that stuff gets stored in a small microprocessor or whatever you want to call it in the phone. And that gets erased if the phone gets erased and it's not accessible on the internet. So that means that there's only a limited number of places you can actually go to use your phone. Basically, your sacrificing security for you know ease of use so google may be more desirable by many people simply because they can use it in more places and meanwhile um you know apple's apple pay you know there's so many fewer places that accept it because i know walmart doesn't accept it i like shopping at walmart a lot of people talk crap because i shop at walmart but guess what i like shopping at walmart so you know hey listen if you got money go where you want gesture control so they said they're gonna or you know they're gonna have more gestures okay that sounds great and then there's gonna be an ios 9 well that's obvious you know there's gonna be an ios 9 
So um, it says iOS 9 is supposed to do more, be more, have better multitasking. They say they may have a split window. But you know what? There's a couple of things about iPhone that do upset me that I'm not afraid to talk about. Some things that even the Galaxy lovers have missed when they criticize iPhone owners. Like, for instance, when I try to use the YouTube app, the YouTube app takes control of everything else, and it makes it so you can't use anything else in the background. And that becomes annoying. Like, let's say if you're watching a video and you want to pull up the brightness and sound bar, and you want to change the brightness of the video, well, if you do that, the video is going to pause and stop. If you turn off the screen of the phone, the screen stops. And whatever you were watching just stops and pauses. Why is it I can't listen to YouTube? Why must I watch the fucking phone if I want to turn off my screen? Furthermore, when you're dealing with these HGTVs, the HD te televisions that they sell in stores, 4K televisions, 1080p televisions, why is it that I can't listen to the television instead of being forced to watch the television? Why can't I turn the monitor off? Do you realize that I could save a lot of energy if I'm laying in my bed listening to television rather than watching the goddamn screen or having the screen on and it's bright and this, that, and other, and I just want to roll over and just listen to television? Why can't I just listen to the television? I mean, have we? is it so difficult to have a feature that just turns the screen off and leaves the speakers on? Is that so difficult? So anyway, that's saying that they're probably going to have two gigabytes of RAM. That sounds great. And um, it's supposed to, you know, they're going to obviously tune it and make it great and everything. So that sounds good. Obviously, people are going to line up for it. Obviously, people are going to buy it. So, you know, I'm not worried about it. They're going to have a record sale of it. All the people who still have 5S's are going to wait till then, and they're going to buy themselves a 6S. Because the problem is you can't leave some contracts until your 18 months is over. So that means if you had a 5S and you'd purchase it day one, you wouldn't be able to leave AT&T, for example, to get the 6S as soon as it came out. You'd be forced to wait. I find that very annoying, and that's a, something that they started during the iPhone 5. I'm very disappointed with AT&T for that shit. They did start some new program that allows you to pay more money in order to let you out of your contract earlier. But me personally, I just... I, I think that's despicable, and that's AT&T, that's not Apple, but, you know, I stick with Apple, I stick with AT&T on Apple because I'm grandfathered into unlimited data. Like, every single month, I'm running 12 gigabytes of data through this damn phone, and um, I listen to Sirius XM on it, which runs it up even more. So now I'm just going to talk a little bit about my Apple Watch to end this video.